So we know now that ionic compounds form from a transfer of electrons and that transfer of electrons creates charged ions. There's always a positive ion and a negative ion. Sometimes there might be more than one positive or more than one negative. But now when you think about how that affects the final product, the final structure of the substance, we think about the strong attraction that's created between these oppositely charged ions. And that really, the final ionic compounds exist as big crystal lattices. Sometimes we just call it like a big crystal. A crystal or a crystal lattice is just a very organized arrangement of oppositely charged ions in this repeating pattern. And so like a sodium chloride crystal it's going to be a whole bunch of sodium and chlorine ions that are all attracted to each other. So you think about like this structure that they've got drawn here and all the green particles are chlorine and, and they're all negatively charged. Lots of negatively charged chlorine ions. And then all these little orange particles are the positive sodium. Positive sodiums everywhere. And so these ions just become attracted to each other in this huge repeating pattern throughout the crystal lattice. And what happens then is that it's almost impossible to tell where one like molecule starts and another molecule ends. We don't really see individual molecules, you know, like a water molecule, where we sometimes draw H2O molecules as like a little oxygen and then maybe like boop, boop, like two hydrogens. And there would be individual molecules. Boop, boop. Like there's two water molecules, separate molecules. You don't necessarily have that in an ionic crystal. I mean, look at this crystal. Where would one molecule start and another molecule end? I don't know. I mean, they're all over the place. It's like, here's one, here's one, here's one. There's just a huge repeating pattern of sodium ion, chlorine ion, sodium ion, chlorine ion. Every time I see a positive orange sodium, it's totally covered with negative green chlorine ions, which in the end is going to totally affect the properties of ionic compounds. They end up being very, very stable crystals, and they're really strong bonds. And if you want to try to break these bonds, I, you've got to break lots of attractive forces between all these oppositely charged ions. And we'll kind of test that in the lab, but in general, ionic bonds are really strong because you've got these really strong attractive forces between the oppositely charged ions. And so eventually when we write a formula, like when I write the formula of sodium chloride as like NaCl, we write it as something called a formula unit or an FU. And so if you ever see like what's the formula unit or sometimes they'll abbreviate it, what's the FU of sodium chloride? It's just what's the simplest repeating pattern of the crystal? And so when I look at the sodium and chlorine ions, they're always repeating at a one-to-one -one ratio. And so we write that as the formula unit. For every one sodium, there's one chlorine. A little different than water. I mean, there's always two hydrogen and one oxygen. But eventually, we'll kind of look at how water molecules are different from like sodium chloride crystals where water really does exist as just individual molecules. And it's pretty easy to see where one molecule starts and then another molecule starts. They're separate molecules. But in a crystal, it's just repeating sodium ions and chlorine ions. And the structure of that repeating pattern is what gives you like the shape and the angles created in the crystal. So sodium chloride is called cubic. It, it forms like a cubic cell. And if you ever look at salt really closely, it is like a little cube. Now this question six, ignore it. We're not going to talk about something called an extended structure. And, and we don't have to like memorize all the different
types of ionic crystals and the different angle, angles formed by different uh, ions or different ratios of ions. We just want to know that ionics is, exist as crystals which are really strong attractions between oppositely charged ions.